just want to take a moment and say here, uh, just reflect a little bit on this process. It's very different than um, my normal um, session incursions with the real people cards. For one, it involves a real person. That's not me. Um, for two, the whole pace of the um, the playing via pictures and electronic mail um, is very different. It's it's the the sessions are are limited in scope. They have to. I I, I can't. I can't like get into it for a couple of hours, but it's just a fun little treat that I get throughout the day is these these emails and I get to do the moves and that's fun. If you haven't had the opportunity to do um, play by email, I, I'd recommend it if you have the table space. It's um, it, one thing it does that um, I I it has an advantage or it has a, a quality that that. I don't get out of solitaire play and I also don't get out of playing with other people face to face and that is each move is kind of um, zoomed in on in a way because it's very deliberate like just moving one of their the other players guys you know you have to you have to look at a picture of where the guy has moved to and you have to you know physically do it and think about it and it's a very kind of deliberate process which makes you kind of um, think about it in a in a different way same with um, you know, since each turn is now, I mean, each turn is even broken up. Um, you're you're going to focus on that turn a little more than if you were just playing a a long game. At least me, I'm not. Uh, I can get in the mode where, like, you know, you play like a two hour long chess game and you're really focused on it. Um, but in general, I <laughs> being a, a father and uh, you know working a lot and rarely getting enough sleep um i i don't have the the time nor maybe the the patience for that as much as i used to in my my freewheeling youth anymore so i i'm i'm able to kind of simulate that um with the play by email format and i just thought i'd i'd mention that for those of you out there who haven't had the opportunity to try play by email it's a it's a i think it's great and it's also nice um in, in that it can help facilitate playing games with other people that you might not otherwise get to play. Um, especially if you're not into solitaire, multiplayer, playing. Um. But anyway, play by email. Good traits. Right, so Praxian's going to take another shot at Boris Andronov and Sir Gawain. Hopefully he hits Boris because that's who I want to take out. Um, we're going to roll for each of them. This will be uh, Boris's roll. This is to determine who he hits, the lowest roll he gets. Okay, so that's Boris too. And here we have Sir Gawain's roll, four. So it is going to be Boris. And I'll go ahead and do the combat and then. And because of the swamp, I don't think I figured this in last time, but I rolled well enough so it didn't actually matter, thankfully. Um, it, it was a minus one to hit. He still rolled a. Uh, I think it was a seven, which was good enough. He needed an eight or better. So he hit, he penetrated. Boris Andronov has got another chip off his shoulder, so to speak. Um, and that's my fire face. So we'll go ahead and move our guys. Um, anyway, so now I have a, a difficult choice to make. Um, I have Agent 911 still running from Spartacus. What do I want to do with Marcus now? It seemed like such a... I think it, the choice is harder because the other option of using Marcus to attack Pat was so um, so good for me that to pick something else now even though that's no longer an option is even harder. I have sort of a mental block. I think I need to consult with my oligarchy and I'll get back to you. So he is going to, he, my son can hear me talk. I don't know if you can hear him. He's calling to me. Um, I'm going to have him go right to this house here. Because that gets him kind of in this area. Um, it's also moving him towards the future labyrinth. So, and it and it'll put kind of the onus of the difficult deci decision. I don't know if onus is the right word, but the weight of the difficult decision on Rocking Horse Dreams. If he wants to fight Marcus, he's going to have to choose to do that. Um, and he's going to see that there's hey, there's another guy here. So if you want to tussle, you're going to need to get involved with. Two fellows instead of just one. See so one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. I've done the rest of the movement for the turn. 
Put him there. Or, you know, just move some guys. Sergeant Grit moves into the labyrinth, but before he can, Sir Gawain reveals his storm sprite with a range of five. Green. Blue, so he doesn't have a very good chance to hit him. It's worth a shot. So, blue versus green is six. Plus he gets the penalty for shooting through the woods is five. Actually, she ignores that, doesn't she? The user attacks by sending a sprite. Hit penalties are ignored for terrain except for the space that the target is in. That works. I think we can do that. And of course it's an eight. The battlefield's changing and the troops are getting restless. Boris took another hit, but he leans on his companion, Sir Gawain, and they venture forth. The Weapon Master Arden advanced the Guardian again. Let's get Annie back into the action before the Future Brothers. That's not the Future Brothers, because Arden's up there. Marcus and Agent 911. They're stepping on my toes here. So Annie's going to move into the fray. And six. They will both move. One. Two. Two, three. Two, three, four. Lena will move seven, and she also gets there. One, two, three, four, five. If she can gain the guardian there, we're in better shape than we were. The mighty Sparty. Marcus might have a weapon, but his defense is not very good. That, combined with that, against that, combined with that, I don't mind my chances so much. I wonder what this is, though. Is it worth finding out? I think it may be. Let's see. I could potentially get to Agent 911, but his special power is on an opponent hit roll against Agent 911, a 12 through 6 automatically misses. A five means the opponent hits himself. He must make a damage challenge against his own armor. That's a huge range, six or twelve, so he's pretty much untouchable. But he's Marcus is definitely in my way. He has a lot of hit points, so I don't think I would kill him anytime soon, but it might be fun to shake things up. I'm Poor Boris over there is taking a beating, and I think the gladiator may be the one to avenge him. One, two, three, four. Let's just do that. Spartacus lunges forward at Marcus. With his bare hands. And Marcus reveals a mighty Warhammer.
which is troubling. So we'll see. We'll see. If Marcus hits, he's going to have a pretty good chance of damaging. It's white against yellow. Sorry for that. White against yellow. He needs an 8 to hit. He gets a 7, so he hits. And red against red for damage. So 7 to squeak damage. He doesn't do any damage. Does he? 9. He needed a 7. A 9. Damage minus 2. So he does 1 damage. I can live with that. Marcus swings back with his Warhammer. Green against green. So he needs 7 to hit. Eight and misses. Pat will now face the guardian, and let's see what it is. Scouting the Cheyenne country. Shouting in Cheyenne country. Watch yourself, or you'll be wearing arrows. And it's a stealth challenge. And Pat has green stealth. Let's see. Green against red is 9, so he needs a 10 to pass. Or 10 to squeak, 9 to pass. And he gets a 5, which should be a maze. 10, 5, he amazes. Pat gets a card. A katana, that's awesome. Time to get some melee on. Can you use it? You can use it. Nice. Onto a five. Which will put him down here. Also, since he amazed that that guardian, it allowed him to banish one character of his choice. So I banished or I Banished 911 and rolled a 3, which doesn't really help much. If I put him there, I'm hoping it'll just draw him over here, which it probably won't. I mean, he can get back here just as easily. There are some buildings I'll have to cross through, but it was either this or up there, and I'm hoping to kind of get a leg up. Um over here and over here so so I think I think I'm okay with 911 either coming here or or coming here we'll see what he does um, yep and Melina gets to face the brink of war which is a blue wits challenge blue versus blue I mean, she needs a 7 to squeak, but let's get a 6, because we want to advance that guardian. I believe, I believe she can do it. 4 and 1 is 5. 7, 5 is a pass. We'll take a pass. And... She will be dismissed too. Let's see. It's been it's been going okay if I ask for things. So maybe if we ask for a two, is that too much to ask for? Come on, two, five. That's nowhere near two. So that puts Melina way out there. Let's see what card she got. The stiletto knife. She comes down to the five and visits the grass golem. And now, turn six is over. 